Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's author spotlight is going to be for Kelly Armstrong, who is one of my favorite authors. Um, I believe she's Canadian for all you Canadian viewers out there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is start with uh, some of the books that I haven't read and then we'll work our way up to my favorite of her series. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is actually a middle grade book, I think that just recently came out, and it's called A Royal Guide to Monster Slaying. So I think the premise is our main character is in line to become the queen, but she and her twin, I guess like she's the older twin and based on their rules, like the oldest sibling or whatever um, gets to become queen or, or king. She wants to be a royal monster hunter instead of her brother being the, the monster hunter. I think somehow she like gets involved with a griffin and a baby jackalope or something like that um, and goes on a journey to discover monsters and herself or something. Um, I'm not sure if this is illustrated. I mean, on Goodreads there is somebody listed as an illustrator, so that like kind of makes me think that there are perhaps illustrations in it. Um, but it sounds really cute. Uh, I'm not big on middle grade, so I probably won't pick this up, but for those of you out there who do like middle grade, maybe this would be a fun little book. The next book I'll talk about is called Missing. So I really don't know much about this um, premise. It is a YA thriller, I think. It says something about like at, at this this place um, every year, lots of kids leave, but then like some of them never come back. And it was like, we thought that it was just something that happened in a town like ours. So I don't know if like something or someone is killing these kids or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll probably will end up picking this up at some point. Um, it's not like super high on my priority list, but it does sound pretty interesting. The next book I'll talk about, um, and so I'm like, I'm just doing quick little overviews of the ones that I haven't read because like, obviously I can't tell you all that much about them. Um, but the next book I'll talk about is Aftermath. So I think this is also a YA, maybe contemporary, maybe thriller, I don't know. Um, but we follow, I think, the main character who is the sister of a guy who was like the shooter in a school shooting. So I think she's probably coming to terms with like how, why and how her brother did all these horrible actions. And then I think we have another character whose brother died in the shooting, who was maybe best friends with our main character. So I think, I think they're probably trying to figure out kind of like what happened and just, you know, come to terms with, you know, unfortunately what did happen. Um, so this is probably another one that I will pick up. Another standalone book that she has that I haven't read is The Masked Truth. Um, so I think this is also a YA like thriller type book. It's some sort of like therapy camp for teens who have some sort of problem. One of the characters is like traumatized because uh, the couple that she was babysitting for got horribly murdered. Um, and then another kid has some sort of life altering diagnosis. So, you know, like that's probably not great. So at this camp, it looks like three masked people break in and like take them hostage because like the captors are on, are on a killing spree. So I think they're probably trying to escape and I'm sure there's some sort of like mystery of like what's going on. I think this one doesn't have as high reviews on Goodreads, but I'll still probably pick it up anyway. So then we start to get into some of her series. So I'm going from like least liked to most liked. Um, so there is a YA series. Um, it's called the Darkest Powers series and the first book is The Summoning. Um, I read this back in the day and like really disliked it. So I don't know if I just don't like her YA books as much um, or like what happened exactly. It's, it's like an urban fantasy paranormal type book. Um, so I think this, there's, this series is a trilogy and then there's like a follow-up trilogy afterwards. Um, obviously I didn't make it past the first book, so I can't really tell you much about it, but you know, maybe even though it didn't work for me, maybe it'll work for you. If we follow our main character, who I think is probably like a high school student, um, so she starts to see ghosts everywhere and they like won't leave her alone. She ends up getting locked up in this like home for troubled teens and I think everybody else maybe has supernatural powers as well, or like some people do. So she's trying to figure out kind of the secrets behind this house for troubled teens and to escape, I believe. I, you know, like I read this years ago, so I don't really remember why I disliked it so much, but I think I was kind of bored and just wasn't really like connecting with the characters. Um, yeah, I wish I could remember more to tell you, but uh, I, I don't think this is one of her strongest series. I think you're totally fine if like, unless this sounds really interesting to you, I think you're probably okay to skip it. Um, 
and I would definitely recommend her other series so much more than, than this particular series. So then she has like another trilogy and I think I think it's a trilogy. It's called the Age of Legends series and the first book is Sea of Shadows. So I did read this within the past five years I think um, and it is a YA I think it's high fantasy. I thought this was okay. It looks like I gave it two out of five stars on Goodreads. I think the premise here is there's like these forests of the dead where the this empire exiles its worst criminals and our main characters are twins and they have to like go into this forest to kind of quiet the souls of the damned, uh, which is like a really interesting premise. Um, but it's like only this year the souls won't be quieted. So they're separated by something, some sort of evil entity, um, and they're like trying to get back together or trying to find each other again. They meet up with various people and go across this wasteland where there's like all sorts of monsters of legend, and I think they're warning the emperor about something. So I don't really remember all that much about it and like why I disliked it, but I think it was kind of the same sort of thing with the, the previous series where I just like wasn't really connecting with the characters and the plot wasn't like super enthralling to me. I mean, I think if this, this premise sounds interesting to you, maybe check out the Goodreads reviews and, and see what other people think as well. Um, but you know, like, I just want to mention these so that like, even though it didn't work for me again, maybe it'll work for you. So then we're moving to more towards the adult series that she has. And I like her adult series so much more. Like I highly recommend all of them. First one that I'll talk about is the Nadia Stafford series. So you may not have heard of this and like, I don't think I've heard anybody on booktube talk about it. Um, it did come out quite a long time ago. Looks like the first book, Exit Strategy, was published in 2007, so like my copies are back home, so like I don't have it here to show you. It basically follows the main character who's a female assassin, which is, and she's like pretty badass. Um, I think this takes place in Canada. I don't remember exactly where. But yeah, so she's like a this contract killer and was a former cop. There was some sort of like scandal or whatever, and so she was kicked out of the, the police force. So oh, then I think a fellow hitman kind of like recruits her, but then there's like some sort of serial killing happening and this, this other character who recruits her thinks that it's like the work of another hitman. So I think he like brings her on to try to help him like solve this and you know, cause like obviously there's like this, this hitman code, I guess, where you know, that it's, it's dangerous for, for somebody to, to go rogue. So this is a, a trilogy. Obviously it finished like a really long time ago, so I'm sure you can probably find all of them. Um, I gave all of these books four out of five stars, so I really did enjoy it. Um, unfortunately, like I can't really remember what they're like particularly about and like I just, um, since I did read them so long ago, but I do remember really liking the main character. Um, I thought the plot was very fast paced and you know, female assassins, female hitman, that's like, that's pretty awesome. Um, so I, I do remember, I think there's some, some romance in there as well. So we've got lots of things happening. The next book I'll talk about is um, a, actually a standalone. So this is an adult book that just came out earlier this year, I think. So this is like, a, this is a thriller. I did give it four out of five stars. Basically what happens is that our main character witnesses a boy being kidnapped, but like nobody believes her. Nobody reported him missing and, but she's like, no, I, I saw him get kidnapped. So then people like start kind of questioning her sanity, like is she making this up? Does she just want attention? Uh, so she I think is a former stay-at-home mom. I think they got divorced. Um, she does not have primary care of her daughter. So people are kind of like questioning again her sanity and like how competent is she really? So she has some like some secrets and we like kind of uncover them as, as the book goes along. Uh, as to like why she is acting the way she is and just like, I guess, yeah, her past and, and whatnot. Uh, but so basically she decides like, okay, the police aren't taking me seriously, but I know this boy has been kidnapped. So I'm going to be the one to like go out and try to find him. Um, so it's, it's kind of just exploring this, this mystery. It is a thrill mystery slash thriller, I guess, um, of her trying to res rescue this boy. It's, it's not super long. Um, and like, it's a very fast paced book. So you can definitely pick it up and get through it pretty quickly. It's also just super engaging and really interesting. Like I wanted to know what happened. Like, did this boy actually get kidnapped or, you know, like, what is she seeing? I seem to remember she, part of her like secret background is she like actually is really competent with technology. So she uses these skills to help, you know, solve this mystery. If you're looking for a standalone adult thriller, I would definitely recommend this. I really enjoyed it.
Then we get into the Rockton series. Uh, so this is, currently there are four books out. I think the fifth one comes out next year. Um, so the, these are, again, just sticking with this whole like mystery thriller trend. These are, these are more of the like thrillers. Um, so the first one is City of the Lost. And then we have A Darkness Absolute. Then This Fallen Prey. And then the most recent one, Watcher in the Woods. Basically, the premise behind this series is that there's this place uh, in the Yukon that like isn't really like on the maps. It's this the city of, of Rockton. So this is basically where people go when they're like kind of in trouble and they pay this mysterious entity a whole bunch of money so that you know they can live under like an assumed name and not be hunted down for perhaps some crimes or whatever else that they've done that they're trying to escape. So in this, I think our main character is a homicide detective, but she actually killed somebody when she was in college and like she was never caught. Um, so then her best friend is like trying to escape her abusive ex-husband. So the husband finds this friend and attacks her. And then so like our main character is like, okay, we need to actually disappear and get off the map. So they apply to this this little town in Canada and there's like very strict rules. You can't have like cell phones, you can't have access to anybody from your old life. So the city or the not city, this this town accepts them because mostly they've they just had their first murder and they really need a homicide detective. So then they kind of like uncover secrets about the people in this town and like what their background is and um it's you know solving the murder. Then the second book, I mean we continue on, I think, let's see, there's like this blizzard that happens and they discover someone who was a former resident who's been held captive and then they discover like more bodies. Again, it's like most of these books, I mean, just are so solving murders. <laughs> I have really liked all of them. I gave them all five out of five stars. So this Fall and Prey, I think there's like some dangerous criminal again who comes into town and things just go awry. So like I'm getting more and more vague as, as I progress through because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but yeah, more averting murders and solving mysteries. And then Watcher in the Woods, um, a U.S. Marshal shows up and is like demanding one of the residents to be turned over. And then the Marshal ends up being killed like a few hours later. We're obviously trying to figure out who murdered the, the Marshal and kind of like, trying to you know keep things quiet because obviously like it's very important to preserve the secrecy of this town and like everybody's privacy. So there's like a very quick overview of the series. Um, they're really great, very fast paced uh, thriller, murder mysteries. Um, I've gave, given them all five out of five stars. So like I highly recommend this if you're looking for a murder mystery thriller type book. Um, it does take place in Canada. So I think it can be like very atmospheric for the fall and the winter. One thing I forgot to mention about the Rockton series is there is actually a bit of romance in there too. So, you know, fun stuff, fun stuff. So now we're getting into her adult urban fantasy series. The first one I'll talk about is the Canesville series, and unfortunately I don't think I have the first book with me. I think it's back at my parents' house, but so the first book I'll put a picture up here is Omen. Then we have Visions, Deceptions, Betrayals, this is getting hard to hold all of them, and then Rituals. Our main character is like the daughter of a very wealthy family, but then she discovers that she is not in fact the daughter of these, these wealthy people, but in fact the daughter of some serial killers who are serving a life sentence. So this is like obviously very jarring. Um, so she's like, what is, what even is, is life? It's like a lot of publicity, obviously, because like this is pretty, pretty big news. So she like wants to find the truth out about her, um, her biological parents. So she goes to the town of Canesville, which is in Illinois, apparently. And it's like this very small community. And she is, is kind of, I don't know, she's trying to uncover her birth parents past and like these people are a little t or tight knit and like maybe don't want to trust her as much. And our main character teams up with a lawyer uh, to focus on like the last crime that ended up putting her biological parents in prison, investigating the case. Then she like is also starting to use these powers that she's had, um, which is basically like she can interpret omens, you know, like maybe she sees a given number of birds or something. So she can like interpret that and see like, oh, is this bad luck or, you know, whatever. This, that was extremely vague and, and badly said, but you get the picture. <laughs> so then in Visions, 
our main character finds a dead woman in her car who's like dressed the same as as our main character and then the body vanishes before anybody else sees it our main character is obviously like this is a, a very bad omen uh, i think it's again just like trying to figure out this or trying to solve this murder and just like learn more about herself um and then in the third book deceptions um olivia who's the main character has like these visions of this little girl we, we start to get more of like the overall plot which is that i'll be i'm gonna try to be vague so i don't spoil this but uh basically this uh pulls from I believe it's welsh mythology and um the characters are the reincarnations of like certain characters in welsh mythology I don't know all that much about Welsh mythology myself, so just kind of, this was a fun introduction to it. Um, so there's there's basically like the wild hunt, like two main two main types of fae. So there are fae creatures in these, um, if that, if you're not interested in that, like, I guess just FYI. I will say there is kind of a bit of a love triangle that happens, but I don't remember being like super irritated by it, but just like, if that bothers you, now you know. <laughs> but yeah, so Betrayals, which is the fourth book, Somebody is like killing off street kids in Chicago, I believe. And again, we're just like trying to solve this and stop it from happening. Um, so this is actually a completed series. This is book five, um, Rituals. So this is kind of, I mean, obviously the culmination of all of, all of this, this story arc where we're like dealing with this like reincarnation business and again, just solving murders. Maybe it's not exclusively Welsh mythology, but there's like definitely Celtic in general influence in, in here. We do get more of like, I guess, the backstory of one of the other main characters in this. It says something about like this this ancient evil or whatever that has had its eye on our main character since she was a baby. Um, you know, it's just kind of dealing with that. So I've given these books either five, four or five stars. So like, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really interesting series. Definitely recommend it. Finally, we get to my favorite of her series, which is an urban fantasy slash maybe paranormal romance, but it's the Otherworld series. So the main series um, is complete. It's 13 books, which is like kind of an appropriate number. But again, all of these are unfortunately at my parents' house, so I don't have them to show you. But the first one, the first book is called Bitten. Um, so generally, we have like all sorts of paranormal creatures in here. The um, <laughs> the first two books follow a female werewolf, and she's the only female werewolf. Um, so it's that these deal more with like the werewolf packs. Then the books three and four deal with a main our main character who is a witch, and there's like you know witches versus sorcerers. Book five follows a character. Uh, I think she is some sort of like half demon, um, but she is. She's dead, so she's like a ghostly half demon who kind of made this deal with the fates, and so she acts as like um, kind of an angel. It's it's really interesting, uh, but I think this one actually does have, if I'm remembering correctly, has a connection with uh, Lizzie Borden. I believe does make um, an appearance, and I really enjoyed that aspect. I think book six goes back to the werewolf main character from the the first two books i mean like obviously all these these characters do come out throughout these books but like it, each particular book may have a different like main character book seven our main character is a necromancer and she's like a celebrity medium and like goes on these shows and basically like pretends to talk to ghosts but she can actually talk to ghosts so that's that's kind of cool book eight deals with a half chaos demon i believe i think book nine she's this this chaos or half chaos demon is, is back in there and i think book 10 goes back to the werewolf then books 11 and 12 are focused on the daughter of the, a sorcerer and the um dead demon angel lady um so she's like a very powerful witch slash sorcerer um and so like we kind of see her grow up throughout these books but anyway she, she's the main main focus in these two books and then book 13 is like the grand finale so we've got everybody back hard to describe all of these but these are all again urban fantasy slash paranormal romance there's definitely some smutty scenes in here so just i guess there's lots of romance also so you know you're warned so i think in the the first book our main character um elena who is the female werewolf like she basically was turned into a werewolf against her will and um kind of goes away from the pack but then she's trying to live as a human then the pack leader like really needs her back to help with um 
I don't know if it's a problem within the pack or what exactly, but he needs her to help with a problem that they're having, so she, like, goes back into the fold. Um, so there was actually a, a, a show on, I think, sci-fi that I think took the material from the first two books. Um, I did watch it. I thought it was okay. I don't think it's nearly as good as the books if you, you know, in case you did also watch that and you're, you're kind of wondering. Um, I would definitely recommend the books over the show. Uh, the, the second book, basically, she, is, her main character is kidnapped, and there's this guy who's, like, trying to kidnap and study supernatural creatures. So he collects all these, these, the, um, these people, and then it's basically, like, uh, the most dangerous game where, you know, he, ha like, has people come in, and they hunt these supernatural creatures. So it's, like, hunted to the death in a real-world video game. Yeah, so... There's just an overview of the first two books, and, like, obviously, we've got a lot more going on. There are, like, five collections of short stories. Um, I have some of them here. Uh, so the, there's, like, Men of the Other World, Tales of the Other World. Then we've got, like, Other World Nights. And then we have Other World Secrets, which I actually just read, and you'll see or hear, I guess, more of my thoughts about that in the mid-month wrap-up that I'll do soon. And then we have Otherworld Chills, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to read this month. Uh, there's also this collection of short stories, Led Astray. I think we revisit more than just, like, this Otherworld series. I think there's some short stories from Canesville and maybe, like, that YA series that I didn't love as much. She has a lot of books, obviously. She has a spinoff um, YA series from this Otherworld series that uh, starts with Wolf Spain, and I mentioned that in my October new releases. Um, so I think that comes out... The time I'm filming and posting this, it should come out next week. So I'm excited for that. Hopefully I enjoy it and, like, you know, it, it doesn't suffer from the, the problems that I had with the other YA books. So we'll see. Again, I really love all of her adult work. I would highly recommend that. The YA is a little more iffy. Um, but, you know, everybody's opinion differs. So perhaps you would, if, if that's the, the premise sounds intriguing to you, again, check it out. But, yeah, so I think... That about does it. She has written a lot of stuff, and I may have missed some, some books. Uh, let me know in the comments, have you read anything by Kelly Armstrong before? Do you think you're going to pick anything up? I think that particularly the Otherworld series is it would be like a perfect October read because, you know, it deals with like the paranormal, and it's just really excellent. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me. But with that, I think I will wrap it up here, and see you in the next one.